Oh, hey, what's up? How you doing? So I heard you want to make a living off of YouTube. Is that right? Nice. I think it's going to be a good move for you. But word to the wise, it's most definitely possible. But nobody said it's going to be easy. The good news is, I'm here to help. I got a whole bunch of videos on this channel that are going to teach you numerous things that you need to know. But for now, let's focus on how I went full time on YouTube with only 2,000 subscribers. Yup. Welcome to Full Land Creative YouTube channel, where we do gear reviews, tips, tricks, and how-tos for creative professionals and entrepreneurs. So before we even start, let me tell you straight up, this is not gonna be one of those videos where I'm gonna tell you, hey look, look at me, I made $100,000 in less than a year with my small little YouTube channel. No, no, no. By the end of the video, I am gonna share with you how much I made when I had 2,000 subscribers and how much I'm making now with 3,700 subscribers roughly. And when I do, hopefully it inspires you to start, but you're gonna know real quick that this ain't one of those get rich quick scheme type of videos. So then who is this video for? It's mainly for those of you in my audience that are prospective YouTubers or you want to be creators, and I'm hoping it could educate you, inspire you, and help you to start if that's something that you want to do. So now that that's out of the way, let's get right into it. So initially, what you got to do is just consume a lot of content, but not any content, quality content, content that's going to teach you all the skills that you need to know to be successful. And what are those skills, you may be asking? Well, here they are. Lighting for filmmaking, how to conduct an interview, how to light an interview, how to operate your camera, photography basics, film making basics, storytelling, public speaking, basic video editing, SEO, and YouTube strategy. So you gotta really dig into these topics. Now I'm gonna give you some YouTube channels that helped me out. Peter McKinnon, Maddie Hapoya, full-time filmmaker. Oh yeah, Think Media, Nick Nimmin. Let me see, who else does how-to content? Um, Oh yeah, you can find a lot of stuff on my channel. Now what I would do with each of these topics is like watch the topic, take notes on it, and then pull out your cell phone and experiment. And just keep repeating that cycle until you're able to make something decent with your cell phone. That way it's not all just theoretical and you're actually getting some hands-on experience. Don't underestimate YouTube and other online content. In my opinion, you can learn more from YouTube than you can from going to school for this stuff. Now, when I first decided that I wanna get into this, I realized something. You know what? Let's say I try to make a YouTube channel, right? And for whatever reason, it didn't work out. Let's say my content wasn't good enough or I wasn't interesting enough or whatever. It doesn't matter because the skills that I picked up, such as learning how to operate a camera, learning how to set up the lighting, the sound, storytelling, etc., those are valuable skills. Video is pretty much taken over, and I'm sure there's a lot of companies out there that are looking for in-house video producers and editors. So my point is, is that you can't lose. So don't worry about the end result and how long it's gonna take you to be successful on YouTube, etc. Concern yourself more with picking up all these valuable skills. And before I share with you the next crucial steps to help get your channel off the ground, go ahead and take a minute to hit that like button for me and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks guys. So let's say you've been soaking in a whole bunch of content and you got a few little practice videos under your belt and you're ready to give it a shot and you wanna go ahead and set up your YouTube channel. You really have to take some time and do some research to see what you want your channel to be about. If you're trying to make money from this, you really gotta approach it like a business. I mean, don't get me wrong, for sure, it should be some of your goals to impact people in a positive way, to help people out, to make sure you're talking about things that you actually enjoy. Now, of course, we wanna do all those things, but we wanna do those things while we're making money because let's not forget this is a business and if you're not making money you're not going to be able to help out anybody or have any type of impact or do anything that being said you have to pick a profitable niche and i'm sure that there's many of them out there and honestly the reason i picked camera gear, filmmaking, YouTube gear, etc. It's because I know camera gear is expensive and I plan my channel around affiliate marketing. Now, as much as I may like boxing or MMA or any other hobbies that I'm into, if they're simply not profitable niches, then it's gonna be hard to make money from those type of topics. That is, unless your channel just completely blows up and you're getting sponsorships and a lot of ad revenue and things like that, then that's different. I wasn't anticipating or trying to count on anything like that. So I was looking for something that even if I didn't have millions or hundreds of thousands of subscribers that I can make a decent living with just a few thousand subscribers. So some examples of profitable niches would be like power tools or 
camping gear, fishing gear, computers, laptops, electronics, culinary equipment, basically anything that's being sold on Amazon and has a big industry behind it. So don't shoot yourself in the foot by starting a YouTube channel about something you're interested in but can't make any money out of. All right, so let's say you got it. You've done some research regarding the type of channel that you wanna make and you got your channel started and you're ready to go. Then my next piece of advice for you would be make sure that you're making video titles that are extremely searchable. YouTube is owned by Google and it's pretty much a search engine as well. So don't start off in the beginning by making videos titled you won't believe what happened yesterday or it wasn't my fault or these type of vague titles. Once you got a million subscribers and people are following your story and they actually are invested in you as a creator and they care about what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, then you can make titles like that. But in the beginning, what I would recommend instead is that in almost every title you make that you include some sort of product name in it. Because think about it, all of your potential subscribers and audience, one of the things they all share and links you automatically is that you guys are in the same industry so you're gonna have interest and similar products and people are actually searching for those products so it's an easy way to get your videos in front of people and if they watch them and your view duration is good and people are responding positively then YouTube is gonna push your video out to more people so make good searchable titles especially in the beginning and then one piece of advice that I was given and that I'm gonna give you which is gonna be more important than maybe anything else in this video is make sure you're providing value meaning make sure that people are benefiting from watching your videos if you're helping people out showing them how to do things, reviewing products that they're interested in purchasing, inspiring them, teaching them, making them laugh, or hopefully all of the above, then chances are you're gonna start to build a nice audience. And remember, you have to make this sustainable as a business, so don't have any shame in letting people know that your affiliate links are in the description. And after you drop some value nuggets on your viewers, remember to ask them to hit the like button, leave comments, and subscribe, because maybe they might forget to do so. It's not their fault, it's not like they have bad intentions, it's just that sometimes people People need to be reminded, right? So that right there is pretty much everything that I've used to build my channel. Now let me go ahead and give you guys what you are waiting for, which is how much money was I making when I had 2,000 subscribers and how much money I'm making now with almost 4,000 subscribers and how I was able to go full-time on YouTube with such a small channel. But first I gotta give you some context, that way you get the full picture. So about 10 years ago I was living in Houston, Texas. It was me, my wife, and three children. And my living expenses at the time were probably around 1,500 to 2,000 dollars a month. Now I always wanted to travel and do the whole digital nomad thing. So I sold my house, I sold my business, and I moved to Malaysia. I lived in Malaysia for about eight years, and I used to teach mixed martial arts there. And when this whole craziness happened around 2020, we were forced to shut down the gym. Now coincidentally, I had already been studying filmmaking so that I could make videos for my gym. And I was just soaking up information for quite some time. But then when the gym closed down, it kind of pushed me to hurry up and start the YouTube channel as I needed another source of income. And I always wanted to start a YouTube channel anyway, because the prospect of being a digital nomad and being able to move around without being tied to a physical location and still be able to make money from anywhere was pretty appealing to me. Now by this time I had two more children so it was me, my wife, and five children. And just to give you an idea of my cost of living in Malaysia, I had a four bedroom, 1600 square foot townhome which was a premium condominium with gated entry, 24 hour security, a badminton facility, basketball, gym, steam room and saunas, jacuzzis and all of that. That, located on the top of a hill in a neighborhood called Aradamansara, which was pretty much like a metropolis in the middle of a rainforest. And the place was landscaped and designed to look like an Indonesian resort hotel. Now you wouldn't believe it if I told you. Do you know how much my rent was for all of that? A little bit under $300. The 700 square foot studio that I used to rent, which I shot many of my YouTube videos on before I left Malaysia, I was renting that office space for about $125. And when it was lunchtime, I'd go downstairs and I'd have rice and fish and shrimp and anything I wanted for about three to four dollars, including the drinks. So why am I telling you all this? Because it's key to why I was able to go full-time on YouTube without having to make a whole bunch of money. And Malaysia isn't the only place. There's digital nomads in Thailand, South America, even some parts of Europe are way cheaper to live in than the West. So imagine if you have a YouTube channel where you're doing affiliate marketing or other monetization strategies and most of your money is coming in dollars from the West, but yet you're spending those dollars in a country where the living expense is super low. I'm not going to get into the details, but I'll tell you straight up. I visited many countries and the standard of living in most places 
is better than the U.S. I know, I know. Most of you probably think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, until you've been out there and visited and seen everything for yourself, don't pass judgment. So anyways, the point of all that is to say, if your living expenses are low, that's going to give you the time to grow your YouTube channel without having to worry about the stress of bills, etc. And there's more than one way to do it. You don't have to get up and move out of America or wherever you are. I've seen people turn their vans into houses, move in with their parents, get roommates, or if they have a place of business, making a small room in the back where they could reside. That way they don't have to pay two rents, etc. You could get creative. There's all sorts of things you can do. And if you're a young guy and you're still living with your parents, then don't waste your time hanging around doing nothing. Learn all these skills and start to set yourself up for success right now where you don't have the stress and the weight of life on your back. All right, so how much money was I making? Well, when I hit 2,000 subscribers, I was probably pulling in about 60 bucks a month in ad revenue, maybe about another $200 in affiliate marketing. I was making another 50 bucks or so a month in LUT sales. And I think there may have been like one product that was sent to review as well. So when you add all that up, I was probably making around $350 a month with my channel at the time. Now that isn't much. And in America, that's like nothing. But in a place like Malaysia and many other places in the world, it was more than enough to pay my rent. Now, if I remember correctly, it probably took me about a year or so to get to the point where I had 2,000 subscribers. So of course, if you want to get into this, you have to have a little bit of money saved up so you don't have to worry as much for the first year or two. And because I had a few previous existing businesses and side hustles and all of that, I wasn't really in a position where I had to stress over money that much. That's why I really wasn't making that many videos. If you look at my channel, the average amount of videos I have is something like two a month or something like that, which really isn't enough to grow a YouTube channel properly. When I've looked at all the people that have been ultra successful on YouTube, on average, they're making about two videos per week. But the thing was, I had all kinds of stuff going on. I moved from Malaysia, and in this past year, I've moved four times, but now I'm settled. And I plan on trying to start hustling pretty hard and trying to bang them two videos a week out. And at the moment, with 3,800 subscribers, the channel is making about five to $600 a month, which may not be a lot in the West, but in this country, it goes a long way. So yeah, I pretty much went full time once I got about 2,000 subscribers. Now, if you plan on doing the digital nomad thing like me, there's a few things I would tell you. Before you leave the West, make sure you download an app called Wise. I left the link to it in the description below. It's basically a bank account that gives you an account number in multiple countries and in multiple currencies. They also give you a debit card that you can use anywhere in the world. And it's crucial that you set this up before you leave the States because this is what you're going to use to get your payment from companies like Amazon. They're pretty much going to be able to do a direct deposit to you with your American bank account details, but then you're going to have access to that money to spend it in whichever country you're in. So yeah, they're pretty much the best online bank account you could get with the cheapest fees that I've seen anywhere. They're located in the UK, they're super reliable, and they get a thumbs up from me. Links in the description. Now, after hearing all of that, if YouTube is still something that you want to pursue, then it's crucial that you watch this video right here, where I tell you all about how to be confident on camera and everything else that you need to know to improve your camera presence. I appreciate you guys sticking with me to the end and I hope to see you next time. It's your boy Fulan and I'm out. Peace.